Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone is doing well. So today I want to talk about Meshtastic routing because yeah, let's just say there's been some kind of misunderstanding about how this kind of all works and a lot of people getting disappointed because messages aren't getting through and all this, all this sort of stuff. So I want to try and clear up a few things and kind of give you a few tips for how you can kind of optimize your mesh. Um, and make it just work better. So Meshtastic have already done a pretty good video about how the flood-based algorithm they use um, to route the messages uh, works, but it's in American. So I'm gonna do an English version with a sort of Southern accent. So maybe someone up North can do a Northern version. I don't, I don't know. X-ray mark. But first off, I wanna just say that what we're trying to do here is not easy. Um, you know, trying to recreate basically like an SMS system that works flawlessly in an area um, using radio um, with no backhaul or any other infrastructure. It's an incredibly difficult thing to do. Um, so whilst there's been a lot of videos out there saying, you know, oh, this is going to replace the mobile phone network, blah, 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 and, and a lot of clickbait stuff. I mean, me included, I've done some, um, some videos, but really mainly to try and just, you know, drive traffic and get people to, to sort of get involved in this because it is better with more people. Well, you know, it depends, <laughs> but it is a difficult thing to achieve. It can work really, really well if a bit of thought has been put into it um, and you shouldn't just kind of just expect it to work. It's one of these things that take, might take a bit of effort. So anyway, let's get started. So a Meshtastic mesh network usually looks like this. You'll have a bunch of nodes which are actually on, um, on the ground. So imagine this, uh, what I'm drawing on here is actually like a map. You're looking down from the top. So it's bird's eye view of the map, and these are the nodes that are spread out across the land. So basically, say for example, um, node one can't actually see node three at all. So there's no connection between, between these two at all. That's not possible. It might be a hill in the middle of it or something else. It just, it's just not possible to talk to number three. But what Mestastic um, node number two can do is it can actually forward the packets across and that's called a hop and that's basically like the fundamentals of a mesh network so you can actually hop across one can hop across two to get to three three can hop across two to get to one and that generally works pretty well but say for example number four over here which is in a very good position can actually hear number one directly now the route the packets take won't be like what we saw before it won't go to two to three and then to four what it will do is it'll actually go to number four first because it's further away. Well, that's the idea. It's further away, but it's based on the signal strength. So because four would most likely be a lower signal than you know the others, two and three, it will send the packets out to number four first. Good news is number two and number three can actually both receive the um, packets from number four. So they'll also be able to communicate. So it's really important to note that the current Meshtastic flood routing algorithm does actually prefer the distant nodes or edge nodes as they call them. So it does this so that it tries to expand the coverage of the of the total mesh. So, you know, you're not getting nodes that are really close, um, kind of just bouncing back and you're just staying in that immediate area. What it's trying to do is get those packets further out and hit more nodes out at a distance. The only problem is, is that the distance is not based on real distance, it's based on signal strength. So the system could actually think it's hitting a node that's really far away, when it's actually not. It's hitting a node that's close, but it's just got a really rubbish signal. So to try and illustrate this with my really crappy drawing of some UK topography, um, so basically this is like a profile of the land. We've got a big hill between nodes one and two, and we've got a little bump between two and three, and we've got a big massive great kind of hill um, with a node on the top of it um, up there. So if we start with node one here, one has actually got a clear sight to four, it's a good line of sight to, to node four. So we'll be able to do comms with four and then four can actually hit three and four can hit two and four can hit five. So that's no problem for one, one is lucky because there's a node on the top of the hill. So node number two, despite this bump in the land here, has actually got a you know a medium signal to three in fact the signal from two to three is very similar to what it is from two to four so you can see what's going to happen here so there's two routes from node number two that the packets can take 
they could actually go directly to number three because the signal between two and three could be worse than the signal from two and four because four and two have got a pretty good line of sight whereas this this bump in the middle so you could end up with a situation where two goes to three not too much of a problem because three will actually repeat on to um, node four anyway but it does mean you've lost a hop here you've lost one hop and even worse, if some other little mobile nodes or, or other nodes pop up around here, then what can happen here is the packets could never actually hit four because all of the hops are depleted um, in, those, in those mobile stations or stations that are in bad positions um, with very bad signal. Um, you know, the, the system's going to think that they're actually further away than four. So we might never hit this four and then five's never actually going to get the packet and also one is never going to get the packet. So you can start to see here a problem with this kind of signal based um, distance calculation. It's just not ideal. So before we go and scream at the Mestastic developers over on their Discord, it's important to realise why it's kind of initially been done this way. And it's it's basically just to try and simplify things and to reduce bandwidth. And um, Bandwidth is at a premium on this sort of system because it's just a simplex radio link. It's, you know, it sends some data out and then waits for a reply. It's not duplex. It's, it hasn't got a backhaul. It's a very, very low bandwidth communications system. But there are some things we can do as MeshTastic users to actually help this situation. So back to my crappy drawing again then, guys. Really sorry about this. So if we are in full control of our mesh and we know all of the users, what we could suggest to the owner of node number four, because he's in a really good position, we could say to him, hey, why don't you switch to router mode? And what router mode will actually do is it adds another layer of priority into the system. So basically packets will be repeated by this router node before any other nodes. So in effect, we're gonna solve this problem. So these little mobile nodes pop up down there. If two sends a packet out, it will no longer go to three, it will go straight to four. It will be received by four and repeated by four. Then, because four is in such a good position, everyone's gonna hear this. Everyone is gonna hear this. All these nodes down here are gonna hear it. This one over here is going to hear it. And of course, our one behind the hill is going to hear it as well. So this will actually solve this particular scenario, having this node in router mode. Now, the other important thing you can do, if you are one of those small nodes that popped up, remember near number three, and you're not really adding anything to the mesh, you're not really you know, contributing to the routing, what you should be doing is putting that node in client mute mode because then it won't be repeating packets and then just you know generating extra traffic that would be advisable so the small nodes out there that can only really see one good one on a hill they should be in client mute it gets a bit more complicated if you're in a house and you have a node outside that can only see one on a hill and you want the flexibility of sort of you know having a node in your house and connecting through the one outside. But in those cases, you might actually be better connecting to your node by Wi-Fi and not using just another client lower node. Also, it's not advisable to up your hop count. The default is set to three, which is good for most cases, but yeah, we can increase it a little bit just to try and help things out if you've got a controlled group or something like that. But don't just put it on the highest setting because it could cause excess traffic somewhere else. It's really important to try and understand what's going on in your local mesh before you start, you know, just randomly changing settings. So what are the takeaways? That, oh, wrong list. Sorry, I know this is a bit heavy. I was just trying to make light of it a bit. So the takeaway should be, one, outstanding nodes in amazing locations with great line of sight could benefit from being in router mode. We've seen this before. You know, it's no secret that having a node in a really good position will just make everything work a lot better. If it can just hit multiple nodes in your mesh, um, you'll, you'll see a dramatic improvement on how this all works. So two, nodes that aren't contributing to the mesh should be in client mute mode. So yeah, basically, if you've just got a node sitting on your desk in your house, it shouldn't be in client mode and repeating packets. It's just no point. Um, if nothing's going to be receiving that outside, um, you know, the signal is just not going to be going anywhere. So yeah, you'd be better off just having that in client mute mode so it doesn't create extra traffic and confuse things, could potentially clog up the mesh. Then number three, don't just up your hop count expecting that to solve the problem. 
um, because it probably won't. There's another thing here that springs to mind because in the UK, we had a massive kind of, you know, surge of interest with Meshtastic. So there's a lot of nodes out there and there's still a lot of nodes out there, you know, today that are just sitting there running. Um, maybe the users have lost interest. So it's really important if we can try and encourage those users to either, you know, get back on, um, but also, you know, look at this kind of situation and see if their, their node is actually kind of adding value to the mesh. Um, and, you know, if not, if they're not interested anymore, get them to turn it off. But more importantly, if they are going to stay on, um, it'd be a good idea to update the firmware on those um, to the most recent versions. So we've seen some improvements to um, message priority in some of the latest updates to the firmware, which has helped things quite a lot. So yeah, if we can reach out to some of those guys and get them to update their nodes, that would be really good as well. So I appreciate this has been a lot to take in on this video. So I'm going to leave this one here for now. But I've actually got lots of other ideas for videos planned to help you with your Meshtastic experience. Um, so those will be coming soon, um, including how to sort of do deep dives on your own mesh to find out what's actually going on, looking at some of the diagnostic tools that are out there and just really helping you understand a little bit more about using the mesh which seems to be a kind of mystical thing that everyone expects to work but when it doesn't um you know it causes <laughs> it causes a lot of headaches so i hope you enjoyed this one and found it useful guys and i'll catch you next time <laughs>